Hello guys and welcome back. Like I said, when I found out more information about Dawn Guard, I would let you know. And I have found out more information, so here I am, ready to let you know. First off, there's been some recent developments and various bits of information regarding Dawn Guard, particularly some bits of information that have been released by Game Informer. Some of it of which you might find very interesting. Uh, here's a basic rundown of the various things that you can expect to find that we weren't already aware of. So, as we already knew that the, the Dawn Guard involved was the return of a vampire lord Harkon which we actually didn't know and he wants to put an end to the sun uh, you have to choose sides which we already gathered from either dawn guard which are vampire hunters or join Harkon who is the vampire lord and then you go down the track of becoming a, a vampire if you go down that route there are two new homes for either conflict one I'm presuming is being in the dawn, dawn guard stronghold and the other one is in the vampire castle the other thing is that when you join up with uh, vampires, you actually become a vampire lord. Like I said, there's lots of people talking about becoming a demon. <laughs> <laughs> They're very wrong. It is definitely a vampire lord, and that's been confirmed. There's another bit of information that v vampire lords and werewolves will now have their own perk trees, which is very, very in uh, interesting. As yet, we don't know what the perk trees include, but what I do know is that there are various skills and things that vampires have, and we'll come to that actually a little bit later on. There are now legendary dragons, which I'm presuming now high-level dragons. I'm presuming maybe more powerful souls, perhaps. I don't know. That's just speculation. But there's going to be other types of monsters, particularly gargoyles, death hounds, and armored trolls. And I think the armored trolls were the thing that I thought was a giant cross with a frost troll, if you remember that. Crossbows, obviously, they've been definitely confirmed. But the bits of information that we don't know is that that underworld that we were talking about is actually called the Soul Cairn, um, which is actually a realm of oblivion. And I know some of you guys have already said, actually, you know, <laughs> Sam, this is... This is another realm of oblivion, that's fine. It's where trap souls, it's where the undead live, and I don't think they're going to be destroyed either in the soul can, at least according to the law, the Elder Scrolls law, that is. There's also a very interesting thing, is that in Riften, in the Ratway, there is somebody who you can go to to change your face and gender of your character, believe it or not. What a strange thing, but... <laughs> That's another, that's another thing. And another thing is that there's new shouts in the game. And one particular one is where you can steal the souls of your dead enemies and use them as a... They become your minion. They become your slaves. Basically, do as you want them to do. There's one thing that is of note, is that uh, vampire lords, they will be attacked on sight by townspeople. However, normal vampires will not be attacked on sight. The other thing is the perks of power. In the base game, the advantages of being a vampire are negligible when compared to the drawbacks. Dawnguard evens out the, that equation, giving, vam giving vampire lords additional powers rooted in their ghastly new form. One ability, Vampiric Grip, suspends an enemy in the air with telekinesis as you drain its health. Other powers include hovering above the ground and turning into a swarm of bats, which is something interesting because we did actually look at that before in the video, in the last video that we did. But the turning into a swarm of bats is actually also uh, not only an NPC or monster ability, it looks like it's going to be a perk of being a vampire lord. So actually, your character will be able to have that ability, which sounds very exciting. The other thing is that werewolves are getting their own unique perk tree as well, complete with abilities with names like Animal Vigor, Savage Feeding, and one power called Totem of the Moon, and lets players summon an ally werewolf with a howl. That's a power that you'll get as a werewolf, but you can only either be a werewolf or a vampire. You can't be both. That's that's another thing that we're pointing out. But I think that's always been the case, because once you become a vampire, you get immunity to disease, so you can't contract any kind of disease so that you would get either lupus canis or sanguinaris something. I can remember what the other vampire disease is. The other thing of note is that there's going to be new weapons, as we've already spoke about, but I didn't realize that the new weapons were going to be dragon bone weapons, which is something very interesting. So all them dragon scales and bones that you've got your hands on, you can now use them as uh, some kind of 
weapon, which is great. Crafting ability to build them into weapons, which I think is actually probably something that they should have done to start with, but it seems great that they've brought it into this DLC. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for your for your attention and very much for your audience. I very really, really appreciate the time that you've taken to have a little listen to what I've got to say. When I find out any more information about Dawn Guard, I'm going to let you know. Anyway, guys, until next time, stay safe, take care of yourself. Goodbye.